Welcome back to the New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. And this is New World Next Week for August 28th, 2014. And you can always find the links and sources cited in these shows on NewWorldNextWeek.com. James, this episode is kind of a strange, synchronous batch of geopolitical stories that show a ton of moves are being made right now on the grand chessboard. So let's start with our first story in France, as there seems to be another IMF chief takedown as Christine Lagarde charged with negligence over graft case. Let's grab this from the AFP. IMF chief Christine Lagarde, one of the world's most powerful women, announced Wednesday, that's today as I still come to you here in the States, August 27th, that she'd been charged with negligence over a multi-million euro graft case relating to her time as French finance minister. The shock announcement came a day after she was grilled for more than 15 hours by a special court in Paris that probes ministerial misconduct, the fourth time she's been questioned in a case that has long weighed upon her position as managing director of the International Monetary Fund, tarnishing the good name of the IMF. Quote, the investigating commission of the Court of Justice of the French Republic has decided to place me under formal investigation, she said in exclusive comments to the AFP. Asked whether she intends to resign, she responded, no. Her fate now hangs on what the IMF Board of Directors will decide. I have instructed my lawyer to appeal this decision, which I consider totally without merit, said Lagarde, who replaced Dominique Strauss-Kahn as IMF chief in 2011 after he became embroiled in a New York sex scandal involving a hotel maid. Now, James, this latest situation with Lagarde relates to payoffs back in the Sarkozy 07 election, which has strange connections to Adidas, the athletics company whose U.S. headquarters is right here in Portland. So I'll remind you to look at last week's episode 200 for more on how your city invests in the same criminals you occasionally see splashed across the front page. But James, we covered the, the wrath of Khan, as we called it, back in May 2011 on New World Next Week. And now there's another scandal. Is this just par for the course or is there more going on here? Very good question. All that we know for sure is that there are a lot of shady dealings around that Sarkozy election. Um, there are so many different connections there that there's, I mean, clearly, I think that probably deserves an examination unto itself. But yeah, the question is why now? Why is Lagarde being taken down? Is she being taken down? Is this just a sort of Damocles? They're just going to dangle over her head as kind of, uh, you know, don't don't step out of line because we have this over you. I don't know. I mean, there are so many different possible ways this can go. I, I guess if there's anything that we learned from the Dominique Strauss-Kahn incident, it's that we don't necessarily know what the power politics are until the story starts to develop. And uh, in that case, there were a lot of people speculating on whether DSK had stepped off, uh, off script and was talking about uh, how the IMF needed to step step away from its austerity and things like that. But as it came out and as, as the story unfolded, it became 100% clear that that was a, ta a political take down a French political takedown. It was affected by uh, uh, members of Sarkozy's election campaign who were caught on camera high-fiving after DSK ended up getting caught and all of this. I mean, it was just it was just blatant what happened there after the, those details started to come out, but it's not the type of thing that we necessarily have access to. I'm racking my brain trying to think of any reason why Lagarde might be being taken down right now. The only thing that's, that's hitting me that was unusual in the last several months was her speech back in January with the magic number seven numerology mumbo jumbo that she was spouting. But is that really a reason for someone like uh, Lagarde to be taken down? I really doubt it, especially since all the talk before this point was how this was, you know, a wink and a nod to the people in the know. So why would she be taken down for that? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm looking for anything that she said that would be against the IMF kind of uh, official talking points or any indication whatsoever that she's going off script. I don't see any in the public record. Maybe if people have some, they can leave them in the comments. But uh, but at this point, again, I think we have to wait to see how this story develops. And uh, who knows? I mean, maybe she'll just use her get out of uh, jail free card uh, and uh, and no nothing will even come of this. So we, I think we have to wait to see what uh, what becomes of the story. I was thinking the same thing that hopefully folks out there will will share their ideas. And this may be one of those cases where we won't know until six months, 12 months down the road where some story will then come out that we'll realize and we'll be able to kind of backtrack and, and connect the dots. So we'll continue to look into that. Our second story, James, we fly over Libya as we note the U.S. is furious 
after the source of mystery Libya bombing raids revealed. This comes from Zero Hedge. Over the last week, a new geopolitical mystery emerged. An unknown party was launching airstrikes against Libya. The strikes puzzled all media outlets, including Reuters, which just over the last weekend reported that, quote, unidentified warplanes attacked positions of an armed faction in the Libyan capital of Tripoli on Saturday, residents and local media said. Local channel Al Naba said the planes had attacked four positions of the Operation Dawn, an umbrella of Isma- Islamist-leaning forces. Now, those unidentified parties have been revealed as Egypt and the United Arab Emirates, which, as the New York Times reports, quote, have secretly teamed up to launch airstrikes against Islamist-aided, or allied, rather, militias battling for control of Tripoli in a major escalation between the supporters and opponents of political Islam. So, James, this is, as I even seem to get lost in the ridiculousness of who's fighting who over what. The surprise here isn't the intervention. It's that both of those countries, Egypt and the UAE, decided to ignore the U.S. So, again, from the New York Times, they say, quote, The United States, the official said, was caught by surprise. Egypt and the Emirates, both close allies and military partners, acted without informing Washington or seeking its consent, leaving the Obama administration on the sidelines. So now, James, in the relateds to this story, too, we'll note that Libya is now a quagmire that looks like Somalia. But what Zero Hedge breaks down is how, like we noted last week, America is falling apart. James. It, well, exactly so, and on the international stage, spectacularly so, given events like these and the fact that now, yes, even relatively minor players on the geopolitical chessboard aren't even informing the uh, Washington of their moves before they make them. That really is a, a diplomatic insult to uh, to the leader of Pax Americana and something that would have been unthinkable a decade or two ago. So it is certainly a, a tectonic shift that's taking place right now. And I suppose the other angle to this story is the unbelievable, astounding hypocrisy of the United States demanding to be informed who's bombing Libya ahead of time because, you know, they're the main player and and how dare you coordinate strikes without us. And uh, this, I think, relates to a tweet that I retweeted from uh, Niall Bowie uh, just earlier uh, earlier this week where he was writing about the, the Russian aid convoy. Uh, he says, if Russia's aid convoys are a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty, What about U.S. not coordinating with Syria as it launches airstrikes? Well, in the exact same way, if they're upset about uh, other countries attacking Libya, then what about uh, not coordinating with Syria on airstrikes or not coordinating with Iraq or what have you? Again, the hypocrisy is just there to see for all. And then I I suppose the third thing that this really exposes is the fact that Libya is a total 100% failed state. And of course, it is a failed state specifically and precisely because of the illegal war of aggression waged on it by NATO in 2011 under the guise of the humanitarian aid, the R2P, whatever ridiculous uh, phrase they use to try to justify that illegal invasion. So it is uh, it is a quagmire. And of course, who are the people who are uh, ultimately suffering the most? It is the Libyan people. And I think we have to be concerned about what's happening there and continuing to, to follow this, despite the fact that Libya has basically disappeared from the face of the planet as far as the MSM is concerned. James, I'm I'm still taking and making notes as we're doing this episode. I'm fairly certain we covered R2P, the responsibility to protect, specifically in a New World Next Week segment. We will include those links as well. And note that, again, we've got some related notes on the quagmire that looks like Somalia from our friend G.J. Salisbury on Twitter. But, James, you mentioned Syria and some of the other geopolitical players we have not yet mentioned on this episode 201 of New World Next Week. So let's move to our third and final story this week. Video of James Foley beheading may have been staged. Let's grab this from The Age newspaper out of Australia. A film purporting to show the beheading of James Foley was probably staged, according to a forensic science company, which suggests the American journalist's execution may have been carried off, carried out rather, off camera. The footage was most likely edited later using slick post-production techniques, according to the analysis for the Times in London by an unnamed international forensic science company that has worked for police forces across Britain, the Times in London claimed. The analysis suggested that the militant, 
who speaks with a London accent and is believed to be British rapper Abdel Majed Abdel Barry. He may have been the front man for the execution and not necessarily the killer. Quote, I think it has been staged. One of the forensic experts told the Times of London, my feeling is that the execution may have happened after the camera was stopped. The Times said that the company did not question that Foley had been beheaded, but rather pointed out that camera trickery appeared to have been used. James, our third story is somewhat of a two-parter, and I set him up and you knock him down. But the other part of this is cueing the American al Qaeda meme right on time as an American fighter fighting for ISIS killed in Syria, this via CNN. An American man died last weekend in Syria while fighting for ISIS, the latest evidence of a reach of a terror group that's become increasingly powerful and feared in the eyes of Americans. Again, this is coming from CNN. Douglas MacArthur McCain, aged 33, died in a battle between rival extremist groups in the suburbs of Aleppo, Syria's once bustling commercial capital and largest city, according to the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, a British-based group that monitors the conflict. The man's uncle, Ken McCain, said that his nephew had gone to fight as a jihadi and that the U.S. State Department told the family Monday about the death. Like U.S. officials, the group characterized McCain as an ISIS fighter and said he was killed battling the Al-Nusra Front, an al-Qaeda-linked organization that the U.S. government has blacklisted as a foreign terror organization. James, the sinks and strange notes and names and numbers ring all throughout these geopolitical stories, but the James Foley beheading story first has been a massive one, so I, I look forward to your take on this. Well, regarding the Foley video, I mean, it's interesting how nonchalant they are in saying, oh, yeah, it's a fake. I mean, this uh, to me is a pretty paradigm shifting moment, not obviously in the fact that videos are faked. I think people already understand that. But the fact that this is now being quite openly admitted and and just treated as well, just sort of part par of the course, we are entering into that running man kind of sci fi fiction uh, fantasy world where, yeah, you really can't believe anything that you're seeing. You really do have to question it. And uh, and here it is coming from a mainstream UK paper. So it, very, very interesting to see that analysis come out. But of course, they want you to believe that, oh, yeah, I mean, the video was faked. But of course, he was killed and killed in the way that we're told he's killed. It's just the video itself that was faked. I, I have no more reason or basis for believing that speculation than I do any other speculation, including the uh, the claims by uh, uh, Bashar al-Assad's political and media advisor that Foley was killed last year and that the UN has information on that. Again, I mean, I'm willing to believe that's not the case, but uh, but again, it's it's very much up in the air at this point, especially given the fact that one of the most fundamental pieces of this entire story has been admittedly faked. Uh, I think we have to keep all of those uh, different options on the table in terms of explaining what this story really means. But on the broader theme of American al Qaeda and all of this, I mean, it really is uh, extremely extremely obvious what is happening now. I mean, there is a concerted effort right now to crank up the fear to an 11 um, around this ISIS, IS, whatever terror group. It is absolutely the uh, the most, I think, the most worrying run-up of, of fear uh, campaign that we've seen in recent years. And, of course, I mean, the worry is always not the bearded Muslim radicals and the American white Al-Qaeda and all of this. It is obviously the false flag implications of this and the, the talk of blowing up cities and the talk that Chicago is, has been targeted and all of this kind of stuff. I mean, again, the, uh, the, the propaganda is off the charts right now. So I'm very concerned about that. And of course, we're approaching the October economic doldrums where most of the, uh, the market crashes in history have come, even as we're hitting 2000 on the S&P and all of these other unbelievable highs on the stock markets. Um, again, there's just a lot of worrying things that are lining up for this uh, fall season. Yeah, James, you, you've already mentioned October, and I was just even thinking this is, this is our last episode for August, and there's an old saying that you never introduce a new a new product in August, that a lot of these things do seem to be sort of the, the teasers of perhaps what, what could be to come. So, James, I think in light of this episode 201, it seems like Adidas should stand for All Day I Dream About Synchronicity. A lot of those stories finding really interesting connections and and sinks if you want to call them that i think we should probably wrap up this episode 201 and note 
for folks to please continue to submit stories to us on Twitter using hashtag New World Next Week. There's a lot of great folks submitting a lot of great stories and a lot of data points that we may otherwise miss. We may not be able to always include them in the show notes, but realize that, of course, it is always appreciated, James. It really is. And, uh, of course, I appreciate the work that you're doing there, James. Thank you so much for another three interesting stories. All right, man. Thank you.